question. Do you know what day this is? No, no, it's not Christmas Eve. It might be, who knows. What day is this though it is the 31st day of Shadowlands. It's the first full month of the expansion in a few hours. It's gonna be the first complete full month. So we have to go for a performance review. We have to go and check all the new systems. How have they been so far? How have you enjoyed them? How have you not enjoyed them? So we have to go and look at Mythic Plus, the raids, at all the open world content, as well as the new systems put in place by Blizzard. So as we start a new expansion, we have to leave the old for last. Things like raids, Mythic Plus, questing, leveling, the story is something that happens every expansion. So now we have to go and look at the new stuff. Things like Renown, things like Covenants, things like Soulbinds, Legendary System, and Torghast, as well as the new end game level zone, which is going to be the mo. So let's start with the new stuff. Let's start with the new things and review how they have been so far. Okay, let's start with a divisive point. Let's start with the mo. So for me, the attempt at creating another end game activity by Blizzard fell on its face right at the start. Now, demo wasn't really marketed, wasn't really pointed out as being a major point of the expansion, you know, a major selling point of the expansion, spending your time in demo, but still it was a pretty relevant part of your day-to-day -day activity, right? So I'm going to come out immediately and say that to me, demo is a six out of 10. And because I speak for the community, I am the voice of the people, people rally behind me. I can say that for the community, this is probably going to be a four out of 10. So my reasoning for being a six out of 10 is this. The previous marketed systems that you wanted to do every day or every week in the previous expansions were things like Warfronts, were things like Island Expeditions, were things like the Withered Scenario or even the Suramar dailies. So compared to those, I think the Mo is just, you know, sufficient, you know, a six out of 10 at best, because those previous systems were pretty terrible. If you ask me at gunpoint, if I had to choose between Island Expeditions or Mo, I would say Mo. Or if you had to ask me about World Quests from Legion or World Quests from BFA or the Mo, I would still say the Mo. So to me, it's just barely acceptable. But, but if I were to rate it in a vacuum, without considering all the prior systems of Blizzard and just looking at it as its own standalone thing, it would probably be closer to a 4 out of 10. Because if you have watched me for a while, you know I have made videos about the Mo. You know I have complained about the Mo and mentioned the problem most people will have seen in live when I was complaining about this in the beta a few weeks earlier. It's empty. There is not enough to do and there is no reason for you to go into the Mo. So Blizzard said, okay, okay, we have a fix. We're going to put sockets as a reward. Okay, fuck. Now we are forced to do the Mo if we want to upgrade our character. An MMORPG is all about character power, so we have to go into the Mo to get these sockets. The problem is, the Mo was still empty. There was still very little to do. And Blizzard also made it even worse by adding the Eye of the Jailer. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a cool idea. It's a pretty flavorful idea. Fits very well into the Mo. And it also helps you not giving you this feeling of wanting or feeling like you have to be in the mode 24 7 to grind because now you have a cap you have a soft lock actually an hard lock system where after a while you have to leave there is a problem though because of this system people were going to min max and the very obvious thing with this system is we need to farm stygia but at the same time we also need reputation because the, the sockets are very high in the reputation with venari so we have to get stygia and reputation and guess what 99% of the mobs in the Mo don't give you reputation and give you very little Stygia. So what happens? Thanks to the system, people are going to run past 99% of the mobs in the Mo. You don't care about any mob that doesn't have a yellow star on him in the minimap. Or if you are lazy and you don't have the time to min-max this properly, you don't care about any mob that doesn't have a yellow star or maybe a red circle on the minimap if you are using handy notes. Basically, only rares and only events is what you care about. So I think the system sort of fell on its feet. Blizzard tried to fix it. They said they would have tried to add a few more things, but nothing changed the, the core of the problem. You want rares or reputation and Stygia and everything else doesn't matter. So to me, I think this wasn't a very successful system. Luckily, with hitting Exalted now, most people are getting to Exalted, have gotten for a few days. So it seems like it's going to become less and less relevant. We will have to see what Blizzard is going to do if anything, if adding anything to the mo, or just leave it there. 
Now, staying somewhat close to the Mo, we have to talk about Torgas now. I guess the evaluation of Torgas is pretty varied because a lot of people enjoyed it in the beta, a lot of people enjoyed it as Torgast was released, and then we had this middle of the ground. When people started entering the third layer, and then the week after they had to deal with the fourth, fifth, and sixth, the stock price, the stock market price of Torgast started dipping down because people started dying, mobs started being more and more, they started being elite, and tons of HP, and being a slog, a lot of the powers were shit. Before, it was fun to try some meme powers, but now mobs are chunking me for 20% of my HP. I need powerful powers, and I'm not getting them, and I'm not getting enough of them. So the complaints, the rate between compliments and complaints started getting skewed towards the negative side of Torghast. So Blizzard enacted a whole slew of changes to Torghast, meaning nerfs to enemies and buffs to you. So in the current state, Torghast has been made rather easy. Torghast has been made more of a chore than an engaging activity due to how simple it is. But you still have to say that it can become pretty enjoyable. I actually had fun playing on my druid. On my guardian druid doing mega reflect damage to everyone, being able to pull a ton. And then go back on my DPS and do tons of DPS, tons of crits and different you know builds that wouldn't normally be able to happen outside of Torghast. So we have to see how Torghast evolves, right? Because now you get all your legendary from the first layers. Now you are grinding layer eight every week for your soul ash. But what's gonna happen in the next raid tier? Eventually you will run out of legendaries to craft. So what are they going to do with the legendary ranks? They will have to upgrade them in item level for the next tier of the raids. They will have to do something with the soul ash. You will be stockpiling for a while. And then the layers, because of course your item level will go up and the layers will become easier. So we have to see how Torghast will evolve. For me, right now, I think it's a 8 out of 10. If you consider it can be done in solo as well as in a group, as well as the time consumption is going to put on you, because right now you only need to do it once a week, one for each layer. So two runs of Torghast a week now. It's going to take you less than an hour a week for your legendary crafting. It's very, very lax. It's very, very, you know, laid back. As far as the community vote, as far as the community perception, based on what I've seen, I think it goes down to a 6 out of 10 because there have been a few too many people scarred by the difficulty jump in the first couple of weeks of Torgas, so they probably have a little bit more of a negative opinion. Now, the other special system introduced in Shadowlands is going to be the Covenant system. Okay, here, instead of giving you my rating and the community rating, I'm going to give you the Raiders rating or the Mythic Plus player rating and then the more casual, laid-back, occasional player rating. I can tell you immediately that the Raider rating is a 1 out of 10 and the occasional player is a 6 out of 10. So why all the negativity here? Well, the Covenant system is very nice. It is spread across four different very clear factions. They have their very clear flavor. You will get your Transmog set, your mounts. They have very clear divides. You know, you have Maldraxxus, that's very green. And then you have Revendret, which is very red. And then Kyrian, which is very white and, and light blue. And then you have Ardenwild, which is like very dark blue and dark green or whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's very thematic. It's very flavorful. It feels nice. You have all different characters you interact with. They have four very distinct stories, which is an extra thing you can try when you play a new character. Go for a different covenant, sure. However, this is all things for the casual side. You know, this is all decent for the casual side. When you look at performance, when you look at stats, when you look at numbers, is when you have to look at the, the, the raiding side, the Mythic Plus side, and it's a disaster. It's a full-blown disaster. The abilities that have been given to the Covenants between specs are completely unbalanced. They are completely and wildly different and create way too much disparity between the different specs. We have seen what you can do with broken Covenant abilities like a Marksmanship Hunter and a Balanced Druid, right? Marksmanship Hunter and Balanced Druid are only good because of their Covenant abilities. If they add a middle-of-the-pack, mediocre, Covenant, like many other specs have right now, they wouldn't be half as good as, as they are now. You take Balanced Druid and give them Adaptive Swarm, 
as their best covenant ability instead of convoke the spirits and they would be benched for most fights. You take marksmanship hunter and you take them away their burst with wild spirits and you give them flayed shot instead and they wouldn't be benched because they are hunters but they will probably play beast mastery. And then you have the disaster of soul binds. Just this week, for example, players playing Night Fae have been able to get their second potency conduit from Dreamweaver. Meanwhile, other covenants will have to wait two to four weeks to get their extra potency slot. You have wildly different power levels for different soul binds, completely unbalanced and unchecked. The last time these things were balanced was basically before the expansion, now they are running wild. You have absolutely grotesque situations where Grove Invigoration from Nia can give up to 6% DPS increase for a balanced druid, whereas a Necrolord playing a many has gotten lead by example nerfed multiple times, so now the damage increase is only 2%. So now, arbitrarily, you have a spec getting 4% more damage than another one because of a single conduit passive, and there is nothing you can do about it. So to me, this entire system is a disaster complete failure awful it is skewing way too much the power of specs and classes because of this old bind and covenant system again it's gonna feel a little bit more nice if you're a casual player a laid-back occasional player that doesn't put too much emphasis in any of this but if you're a raider if you're a mythic plus player this is going to weigh much more on you on your evaluation of the system so to me so to me this has been really bad and for the record, for the record, in case I could be biased, as an elemental shaman, I haven't even gotten to the bad part for my spec. Because my spec is going to get progressively worse as we unlock more and more renown and more and more soulbind slots. So right now, it isn't even that bad as it is going to be in a couple of months. I just hope that in a couple of months, with the progression mostly finished for top guilds, Blizzard will have sent through a bunch of fixes and nerves and buffs to several of the covenants and soul binds to sort of try to lessen this problem but for now to me it's a very bad system when it comes to player power now continuing our talk of player power we are talking about raids and dungeons we are clamping them up together because as we talk about them we also have to talk about itemization gearing up loot item level so to me castonatria is a very good raid it is the best of the early first raids I've ever seen, not just in terms of, you know, aesthetics, flavor, but also just in, you know, boss mechanics, boss fights. They're just very nice compared to something like Emerald Nightmare, High Mall, even uh, Uldir. Although, as I said in my last video, Uldir was probably the best before Castle Natria, so I really enjoy the raid. When it comes to Mythic Plus, I enjoy them much more than Legion, but out of Blizzard's own admission, they didn't even think about Mythic Plus in Legion. They literally developed all the dungeons for Mythic Zero and then came up with the idea of Mythic Plus after. So all the dungeons were wildly unbalanced in Legion. Compared to BFA, I think they are somewhat on the same level, but the annoyance of some of the BFA dungeons, I don't see them as much here. In BFA, between King's Rest, Shrine of the Storm, the, the camera angles of Waycrest Manor and Toldagor. I don't see all these problems in these current dungeons. Maybe you can get your opinion skewed by the difficulty of them, but if you just look them impartially in a vacuum, imagining the dungeons to be balanced in difficulty, I don't think that any of them is bad. Even a close quarter dungeon like Theater of Pain or even Sanguine Depths is nowhere close the level of camera angles problems we had in BFA. I think they are more balanced for all types of healers when it comes to the magic debuffs, curse debuffs, uh, disease and poison debuffs spread in the different dungeons. So I think they are better than previous expansions. So for me, I would say that the raid is a 9 out of 10 and the dungeons are an 8 out of 10. No idea about community perception about this. I said I am the voice of the people, but on this very point, I think the people are silent. Not really sure how you guys rate the current raid and the current dungeon, so let me know. But now we have to talk about the more important thing, the things, the thing everyone cares about, which is loot. So how do we feel about the way you are currently gearing up? I sort of warned people months ago about what would have happened in Shadowlands with the lack of welfare loot. It would have been quite a struggle for people to gear up. I didn't think it would have been as much of a struggle for raiders though because even as a raider 
it is actually pretty tough to level up your gear. I am right now 208 slash 209, depending on what I'm running with. And it's probably going to be the first time ever I go two full weeks of a raid without getting a single mythic piece, for example. Outside of the vault, you know, outside of other means of getting that item level, it's the first time I don't get anything in two full weeks. You know, part of it can be the fault of personal loot, but a lot of it is because you're only getting three items per boss. So to even just make sure your entire 25-man roster gets one item each, you have to kill like nine bosses. You have to kill bosses nine times. That's how slow gearing up is going to be. So I have to say I'm not too big of a fan. I am a fan of slow gearing up. I am a fan of cutting out all those undeserving people who were able to cut the queue and start asking for mythic plus 15 or heroic pugs simply because they have gotten the item level to be queued up for that difficulty even though they didn't prove they were able to do it, right? It's like a clown that depletes a plus 7 but after one month he has gotten a bunch of titan forges left and right so now he starts queuing up for plus 14s even though he can't even reliably clear a plus 7. This system is gone now. Now you can't have this anymore but I think some of the lengths Blizzard did to, to cut this system have been a little bit too drastic. The three items from Mythic for example I think is pretty brutal for no real reason as well as the Mythic plus item cut. Once you remove the item level from Mythic Plus so that it is no longer the same as Heroic, on top of that you also cut the number of items you get, it really starts becoming slow to gear up. So I do still prefer it much more to Legion and BFA. So even in this famished state of gear acquisition, I still think it's a 7 out of 10 because it is just so much better than the previous expansions. Basically, if I had to choose between overeating or starving, I would go for starving rather than giving everyone what they shouldn't get and what they do not deserve. I, I am sure the community rating for itemization is going to be a 2 out of 10 because, of course, most of the community is not mythic rating. Most of the community is not doing a lot of high level mythic plus which means most of the community is used to getting free handouts is used to getting their 30 item level titan forge from a world quest which they don't get anymore so they will be pissed now the side note at the end about the story and leveling i think the story and leveling was fine i think it has improved greatly the leveling system from the beta you know the beta was very wacky Sometimes in some versions of the beta you would get to the last zone already at max level. So you had to do an entire zone at max level for no reason. Other times it was the opposite. Other times you were getting such little XP right after Bastion that you had to grind mobs for two hours before you hit the level required to continue the quest line. It happened particularly in Ardenwild a lot. But now it has been fixed in live. It is much more smooth. I think it is a much better way than it was before. And... You know, as far as the story, I made videos about this before. I'm not a great fan of the story overall. I do enjoy Reverend Red. I do not enjoy how we are fighting the Natrius. I am siding, by the way, with the Natrius on this. I do enjoy the story in Ardenwild, mostly because I side with the Drust. I think the story in Bastion is cringe, because I side with the Forsworn, and I don't care about the Kyrian NPCs. So I think the story is serviceable. I think the entire... The entire expansion is carried more by the, as I mentioned in the Covenant point, by the flavor of all the Covenant systems, the Covenant um, settings. The art is always top-notch, you know, the aesthetics, the very clear device between all the zones and all the characters is very nice, nicely done. So I think that is what carries the, the feeling of the story, more so than, you know, the actual dialogue and the actual plot twists and whatnot, which I don't think are that good. So to me... Between the leveling, which is pretty good, like an 8, 8.5 eight out of 10, and the story, which is like 6.5, I think, overall, the flavor of the expansion between the story and the quest lines is a 7 out of 10. I think the community will actually enjoy this as well. I think it's also a 7 out of 10 for you, because, you know, I, I do think it was enjoyable. So I do think overall it was an enjoyable leveling system. I enjoyed it more than BFA, and I enjoyed it more than Legion as well. So it was, it was nice. It was, it was acceptable, I would say. So... To close this performance review, I obviously am going to weigh my review based on the things I enjoy the most. If I were a PvPer, and to me the PvP was an absolute disaster, I couldn't give 
the expansion a good rating because the most important thing for me is ruined, right? So this overall rating is way more subjective because I'm going to weigh certain ratings more than others because that's what I care more about. So to me, it's a seven and a half out of 10. I enjoy the first raid a lot. I enjoy the dungeons the way they, they are for now, especially after we keep going through some changes, some fixes. I'm also a pretty big fan of the first seasonal affix, Prideful. I think it's really nice. I enjoy Torghast as well. I stomached the Mo, which is the part I, one of the parts I like the least, but I stomached it. Now I'm getting to Exalted, so I don't have to deal with it too much anymore. And I don't, want, I don't think it should weigh on the rating of an expansion so much. Something that basically for me lasted like three weeks and now it's gone. So I don't put too much weight into it. I am stopping at a 7.5 out of 10 because the Covenant and Soulbind system right now is terrible. The reason why I'm not docking more rating from this is because this is Blizzard. We know with 99.74% of a chance that this is going to be balanced over time. Before the next tier, you are 100% guaranteed to get multiple changes to Soulbinds and Covenants. More likely than not, you will get an expanded tier of your Soulbind talent tree, basically. More options, more conduits and whatnot, so right now it is pretty disappointing, but we will have to see how it develops in the future. So I don't put too much of a negative, too much of a negative value on this so far. So this is where I am at. It had the potential to be the best of the expansions at the release. However, these systems, the more the wildly different power levels in Covenants and Soulbinds, I think have docked it down too much. I think right now it's a healthy 7 out of 10. I think it's an enjoyable expansion and I hope we will continue in the Blizzard tradition of making the expansion better as the time goes by, which by the way, I do not agree with. I would rather have the expansion better at the start rather than having to wait six months for it to improve, but that's what Blizzard does. So we have to deal with it. So let me know your ratings, guys. I'm not just interested in the ratings, but more so where do you put more weight in? Because of course my weight is in raids, is in more Mythic Plus, more performance driven situations. Maybe some other people will care more about PvP, about the story, about the leveling, because they are altaholics and they are at their seventh character right now. Maybe others are in Torghast. So let me know how it's been for you this first month as you are, I don't know, wrapping presents. So see you guys soon. Happy Christmas to you, your family, your dog, and your neighbor. I'm leaving. I'm abandoning you. I have to start cooking for Christmas because that's what we do in Italy. We start 10 hours earlier. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, 